trunks, they ever ready. Assault and battery, if you scared, you never ready. Okay, this video is gonna be about the month of May, uh, the year 2015. The past 28 days, I guess we're on May 28th right now. And, uh, well, 20, yeah, May 28th, May 29th. So the, the month is pretty much coming to an end. And when you look back on this month of May, it's just every week had something special. Every week had something to make people talk. And you don't get that in wrestling too much where you just mark out time after time, week after week, show after show almost. And it's cool. It's cool to see that wrestling can really hook fans after just so many rehashed gimmicks or just same guys over and over again. Uh, seems like a new breath of fresh air and uh, it's cool. Like, you know, I just... For WWE alone, you got, you know, Sami Zayn. I made a little list right here in case I forget. First week of May, you had Sami Zayn in Montreal make his uh, unofficial Raw debut. Having a great match, nonetheless, unfortunately. <laughs> dislocating his shoulder during his entrance, which was never a good thing. But that moment in of itself, just for fans, been waiting for so long to see this guy on Raw. I know we had the tag match before, but I think... You know, sometimes people even forget about that because I think that moment was more for Adrian Neville to show off his, his high flying skills. But May 4th, John Cena versus Sami Zayn uh, in Montreal, for of all places, a uh, very, very cool moment. And then May 11th, the week after, you had uh, Daniel Bryan who uh, relinquished his Intercontinental title, gave his little speech about he may not even be wrestling. Uh, he doesn't even know when. Unfortunate, but. Obviously had people talking, poor guy can never catch a break. Whenever he has some sort of momentum, it's just uh, a roadblock that just puts him on the sidelines. And then May 18th, the week after that, you had Kevin Owens make a <laughs> very impactful debut, unofficial debut on Monday Night Raw, uh, interrupting John Cena, beating him up. And Rusev and Lana was during the same week. This was the night after uh, Payback. But for me, I thought this was a pretty big deal as well. I don't know if, you know, with Elimination Chamber coming up, this could be a big swerve coming up where Lana's just, like, out to screw over Dolph Ziggler. But for, for what it is, uh, having a power couple like Rusev and Lana, who've really been running roughshod for just over a year now, to see them break up and, and go their separate ways, it's it's kind of a big deal because she made a manager just, like, credible again you know there's only a few handful of people over the past year past few years really who who really made managers a cool thing and made them a credible thing and uh, Lana was one of them and uh, for her to kind of break off uh was was very noteworthy for me at least and then uh a week after well that Wednesday a couple days after you had <laughs> Samoa Joe who made his uh WWE debut on NXT Definitely the biggest news of that this whole month just rocked the entire foundation, I think, of professional wrestling. Everyone from, like, the bottom guy on some indie show in Kentucky to the top guys in New Japan to the top guys in WWE all had something to say about Samoa Joe. And that's how you leave an impact, and that's how you make a debut, and that's how you get people talking. And for us fans, there, I think we need no explanation. We know how we reacted, and we know how everyone else reacted. And it was definitely like something special that you don't get to see very often. And we get to be part of uh, just an amazing moment. I'm just really is all I can say. And then that's the WWE thing. You have TNA who uh, kind of can't catch a break on themselves. Dixie Carter was on Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast. And it was a very good uh, two-parter. You have to level with the woman. She's a very kind individual. Too kind to be in professional wrestling. And uh, coincidentally, she was talking about uh, being upset with the network about not releasing certain numbers when it comes to ratings. And uh, next thing you know, they are rumors going around. Dave Meltzer reported that Destination America does not want to renew TNA's contract uh, at the end of the year. Their one-year contract. Uh... I guess the wrestlers had no idea of this. They are denying this. Dixie Carter is no-selling it. Destination America is keeping quiet about it. So it seems like it's all... Like we're reliving Spike TV's 
uh, departure with TNA. They kept quiet. No one said anything, and the wrestlers were all like denying every little tidbit of information. And the next thing you know, hey, they're not on Spike TV anymore, and you had three months without any TNA, uh, live TNA. So, poor TNA, no, I hope they, they succeed. I hope something comes out of it because there are a lot of talented people in that company. And to see them just kind of jobless because of a, you know, mismanagement, maybe is the proper word, it would be a shame. So, that's obviously one of the bigger stories. And then you have ROH, who TNA's uh, fall will be ROH's rise, where they <laughs> signed a TV deal with the same network that TNA's with. So you're probably going to get some sort of Wednesday Night War now, and it'll be cool. I think, I don't know, it's going to be something definitely to look forward to, because I think I feel like ROH and TNA now are on a, a very competitive level, where ROH may be slightly behind, but it's enough for them to kind of put up a fight and I think with the proper proper booking proper this proper that they can really give TNA a uh, run for their money and I'm I'm definitely on team ROH on this one and speaking of ROH they had two well four amazing amazing shows two in Philadelphia and two in Toronto for their New Japan collaboration I attended night one in Toronto had a had a blast I heard night two was was great and uh, from what I hear the Philadelphia crowd both nights were unbelievable so that's the month of may and i think it's safe to say that you don't get too many months like this where so much news and so much stuff just happen all all within 29 days of each other a little really less may 4th to may 28th really because yesterday was the roh announcement 27th but uh man if only every month was like this it feels gives you that feeling like man wrestling's on the up and up and uh but next thing you know, Raw's going to come on and we're all going to fall asleep. But we'll enjoy it while we can. And uh, looking forward to Elimination Chamber. Because uh, obviously I think for me, Kevin Owens and John Cena is that one match that is a can't miss. Just, it's going to be something good. I have a feeling. I have no doubt in my mind really. But that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.